Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to solve problem number 456132 pattern. First, we will see the explanation of the problem statement, then the logic on the code. Now let's dive into the solution. So in this problem, we are given an input array nums and we need to find a 132 pattern, right? So here, 1 refers to i, 3 refers to k, 2 refers to j. So usually it will be i, j and k right so the condition for the 132 pattern is 1 should be less than 3 and 3 should be less than 2 that is ith value should be less than kth value and kth value should be less than jth value so here we could see that right i is 1 k is 2 and j is 4 so this condition is satisfied so 132 pattern has been found in the following nums array right so whenever we find that particular pattern we just return true if we don't find that pattern we will be returning false right so now we will see how we are going to do this so this 132 pattern it should be in a subsequence of integers right so first we are going to have minimum prefix array where we are going to store the minimum prefix value for each and every index value, right? So first, for 3, since 3 is starting, so we are just going to keep 3 as it is. So now we are going to compare 1 with 3, right? So what is the minimum value between 1 and 3? 1 is the minimum value. So we will be storing 1 as it is. Then we go and pick the next value, 4. We have to compare 4 and 1, which is the minimum value, 1. So, we are just comparing for that particular index, the minimum possible prefix value is 1. Then, we pick the next value, 2. We compare 2 and 1, the minimum value is 1 again. So, here we have stored the minimum possible prefix value for each index. So this is nothing but the 1, right? This particular pattern we are storing. So initially, we are going to check 2 and 1, right? So this particular pattern is going to be checked, right? That is, we are going to start from the end value from both the array. So we take the original value from nums, that is 2, and we are going to check the prefix value of 2, right? This is actually k greater than i, the 1, 3 pattern, right? So we are not considering 2 yet. We are just checking for 1 and 3. So if this is true, 1, 3 pattern satisfies. If this condition is true, we are going to store the k value in a stack. So the k value is 2, that is the original value. So there are other steps I will show you guys in the next iteration. So then we are going to take the next value 4, right? So here 4 will be treated as k at the start. So we will see when this particular 4 will be treated as real j, that is the 2 pattern. Then we pick the prefix value of 4, that is 1. So again we have to compare 4 and 1. Here 4 is greater than 1. So this is true, right? So now we need to check whether the current prefix minimum value, right, that is 1, is greater than equal to the last value in the stack. If this is true, the pattern fails. We have to delete the element from the stack until we find a greater value in the stack, right? So in this case, the value in the stack is greater. 2 is greater than 1. So we don't have to pop anything here. So then we are going to make this value as k. We are going to treat this value as k, right? Then we are going to make the current value as j. So we are going to check for 3, 2 pattern, right? The previously stored value will be treated as k right now. If this is less than the current value itself. Now the 4 will be treated as j. Now we are going to check for 3, 2 pattern, right? 
So if this is true, since it is true here, this is a valid pattern. So we just have to return this particular condition also satisfied. So we checked for 1, 3 at the start in this iteration. So we are in the second iteration only, right? So first we checked for 1, 3 pattern that was satisfied. Then we checked whether the previous k value, that is the 2, is greater than current minimum value or not. That is this one, right? Then we are making this 2 as k and then we are making this particular current value as j, right? Then we compare for 3, 2 pattern. If that is true, we are going to just return true, else we will be storing 4 in the stack, right? So the time complexity will be order of n and space will be order of n as well. That's all the logic is. Now we will see the code. So before we code, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, please like and subscribe. This will motivate me to upload more videos in future and also check out my previous videos and keep supporting guys. So initially we need to check whether we have an array of length of 3. If it is less than 3, we just return false. So then we are going to create min prefix array which will be having zeros at the start for the length of n. Then we are going to store the first value as it is, right? So then we are going to store the minimum prefix value for each and every value in the nums array in the min prefix array, right? So then we are going to create a stack. Then we are going to write another loop where we are going to start from the last value in the nums array as well as we are going to check with the minimum prefix array, right? That is, we are checking for 1, 3 pattern. If that is true, we will be then checking for the minimum value in the prefix that is the current minimum value in the prefix and the last value in the stack right so if that is true we will be keep on popping the values in the stack until we find a valid pattern after finding that we need to compare that particular end value in the stack which will be treated as k here with the current j value in the nums so in this particular condition the current value is treated as k. In this particular condition, the current j value is actually the j value itself, right? The stack value in the end, the end stack value will be treated as k in this particular stage, right? If that is true, we have found the 3, 2 pattern, right? So here we checked for 1 and 3 and here we are checked for 3 and 2. So after we find that we have to just return true else we will be storing this current value in the stack which will be later treated as k in the next iterations right and we, if we can't find the pattern we just return false here right that's all the code is now we will run the code thank you guys for watching this video if you guys like this video please hit the like button and also don't forget to press the subscribe button in order to get notifications of my upcoming videos i'll see you guys in the next one